My name is Tom Holland. Welcome back to Field Target Tech. This is episode number 10. And today we're going to go through uh, installing a regulator in a Marauder. Uh, very simple process. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, being that we've had a lot of uh, YouTube uh, problems in the last couple of weeks, I'm glad all those issues were uh, kind of fixed. All the channels seem to be back up and running again. Uh, it hasn't affected me, but I've kept the uh, close eye on it, and I'm glad that most of the channels are all back again. Um, I also want to thank everyone that gave me some best wishes for my uh, National Crossbow uh, Championship that I was shooting in uh, the last couple of weeks, getting prepared for it. Uh, preliminary uh, scores say, unofficially, I probably won the Nationals again this year. So, again, there's more scores to come in, but that's what I have for the moment. Um, Today, like I said, we're going to be going through putting a regulator in a Benjamin Marauder. Uh, before we get going, I um, want to explain a little bit on how the mechanics of the Marauder works. Um, in back of me is a crude drawing. As I've said before, I am not an artist by any means. Um, you have the air body, which is the main um, air tube, and the same housing that houses the air tube is the same housing that, ha that houses your gauge block, your valve, your hammer, your hammer spring, and all the adjustments that you use. Um, they are in this order. On the back where you have the big adjustment, the small adjustment will adjust this hammer length. So that's your hammer throw adjustment for those of you who just don't have a real inner working knowledge of this gun. Um, the big screw is the hammer spring. That determines how much pressure and force the hammer hits the valve. Now here you have the valve and you have two O-rings on that valve and you have the transfer port adjustment on the bottom of it. That transfer port adjustment meters the air that will come through the valve this way and up to the transfer port to go out the barrel when the, bar when the, when the bolt is closed. So you have your valve body here, your hammer, and then uh, excuse me, your your valve body, and then you have your gauge body over here. This is where your gauge will sit, and that has two O-rings on it to seal as well. Now, all of these items are installed from the rear of the air tube. Granted, when the, everything is degassed and empty. These cannot be installed through the front like we are going to do with the regulator. Um, all these items get installed from the rear. Uh, we will not be taking any of these parts out with my gun. Uh, my gun doesn't even have a barrel on it at the moment. I scavenged it for another purpose, um, and I'm waiting for the new uh, designed 177 caliber Crossman barrels as we speak. Um, what we're going to do basically is we're going to remove the fitting in the front that houses your foster fitting. This is your fill. This is what you would attach your air hose to, and I'll show you that afterwards as well. We're going to remove this and we're going to slide the regulator and this is a regulator from Airgun Exporter which is Vincent Van Gerven. Um, it will go in this direction and it will just slide down the tube and it's going to butt up against the gauge block. Now as you notice on here there is a provision for a gauge. You can remove this if you want and replace this with the regulator and put the gauge onto the regulator. Once you do that, this gauge will no longer read the pressure in the air tube. It will read the regulated pressure on the low side of the regulator. So this is going to take the regulated air that's 3000 PSI or 2500 or whatever you like to fill to and it will put an output of somewhere around 14 between 12 and 1400 PSI depending on what regulator it is and how you have it adjusted. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the workbench in a minute and we are going to install this into the next to the gauge block. I am not going to remove this gauge block. It's too much trouble. Um, I'm going to have to have the gun apart again anyway to replace the barrel and everything, but we're not going to do that today. We're just simply putting in a regulator. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this device before we even start and we're going to degas the gun and I will show you that process as well. And what that does is it screws into 
the main cap that's on the rear of the gun and it hits the hammer and basically what it does is it pushes the hammer into the valve and opens the valve and lets the air out of the barrel so with that being said let's go to the workbench okay this is my Benjamin Marauder um, as you can see underneath we have about 1500 pounds of pressure in this gun we do not want to do anything to this gun until we depressurize it now I've had guys say, well, do I have to degas the gun in order to tune it and uh, do these adjustments here in the back? No, you do not. This gun was designed for these adjustments back here to be made while the gun is pressurized. That's one of the perks of this gun. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this device, as I said, and we're going to screw this into the back, just like this, and it's as easy as that. And what we're going to do is we're going to get an Allen key here. And all we're going to do is turn this until you hear air hit. And there's the air. And as you see, the pressure goes down. These gauges are not all that accurate. Um, do not depend on. Do not depend on this gauge reading zero for it to, to, to have zero pressure. As you see, it reads zero, and there's still pressure in this gun. So you want to wait until all that hissing goes away. Let's open up the valve a little more. and you still hear air coming out. And the gauge still reads zero. So do not by any means trust these gauges. Give it a little more turn. The valve is already all, all the way open now and you'll, you'll hear the pressure actually stop when it is fully degassed. This is the most important part of the whole operation. Um, I've seen so many uh, videos of guys getting hurt and not doing it right and say, oh, it's just a few PSI that's in it and all of that. Take no chances, guys. It's, it's really not worth it. Um, even CO2 guns. CO2, I think, has a working pressure of a new canister somewhere around 800 PSI. Um, it's definitely not 3,000 the way this is designed to be. Uh, filled, but it is still dangerous. Do not work on any gun that has any pressure in it whatsoever. And that includes single pump pneumatics as well, or multi pump pneumatics. Um, never work on those guns with any kind of pressure in them at all. Even one pump, it can, it can lead to disaster. So this is still hissing right now. I'm going to le le leave that set. Um, and I'll explain this regulator for a minute. Um, there's a, you want to attach a string onto the front of this regulator. So when we install it in the future, when this goes into where this is going to be, it's going to sit right about here. This string will be attached. So in the future, you can get this thing out a lot easier than if you did not have that string on there. So you want to tie that string on it. Okay, this is almost finished hissing away so we're almost depressurized a hundred percent right now so um, just gonna wait another minute and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this and we're gonna take the barrel band off um, again I do not have a barrel or a shroud on this because I scavenged them for another gun so I already loosened this we're gonna take the barrel band off we're gonna put that aside now that leaves us with the foster fitting and this piece. Um, there's no need to remove the foster fitting from this piece. What we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this from the air tube body. Um, it's snugly on. It should not be, it should be just a little bit more than hand tight. Um, this thing is done hissing right now, so we are going to remove the degassing tool 
like so. And we're going to take that out and we'll put that aside for another day. Okay, now we're going to go to the front here. And I'm going to lightly take, being very careful not to um, mung up the threads for your, your, your cap. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the rest of this out by hand. I'm going to use my wrench here on the foster fitting uh, to speed this up a little bit. This is all there is to it. You want to be very careful. Like I said, these threads in here are extremely fine. And you want to be very careful when you bring them across those threads. Nice and easy. And as you see, this is lubed very nicely. So what we're going to do is, I've already done it, I put a little wipe of what we call super lube, synthetic grease. Um, this is the grease that was supplied with my styre, um, albeit a smaller uh, container than this. Um, this is probably one of the best synthetics that you can use for this. If it's good enough for a styre, it's good enough for um, every other part as well. Uh, so now what we want to do is I put a little bit of a wipe of grease on it and you can see the grease. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to just slip this in nice and easy. Again, being very, very careful past those threads and the O-ring. You want to get it past it. Now what we're going to do, so you want to take a piece of PVC like this and just slowly slide the regulator down in until it bottoms out. And now it bottoms out, as you can see, where the gauge is or was. I removed this block, but you do not have to. Um, I did it because it didn't have one in it and I couldn't find a gauge block to receive it. So you line that up with it, you take your gauge, you screw your gauge back in. Now this is going directly into the regulator and again you just want to do a light a very light tighten on these, just a little bit past finger tight. You don't have to go absolutely crazy with these things. So we're just going to make that just a little snug and that's it. There's no need to go absolutely bananas with it. So your regulator is in, it's next to your valve. Here's your transfer port adjustment for those of you who uh, have never had the gun open to this effect. That's your transfer port adjustment. Now what you want to do is you want to take your, your little string here and just tuck it back in. This isn't going to get in the way of anything. It's not going to hurt anything. And just make sure that that's down far enough. And again, and I've already done it, I put a little bit of grease on that O-ring. And again, you just want to be very, very careful getting past those threads. Just like that. And I will use my wrench again on the foster fitting to tighten this.
and it just stops and you just want to go a little bit more and that's it is just a little bit more than a hand tight fit and this will not leak um, right now that's it that's all there is to the regulator install now what we do is we check this everything is in that has to be in uh, to make sure it's safe and now what we're going to do let me clean some of this stuff away here that we don't need and what we're going to do is we're going to charge it up with this ninja bottle now this is a paintball bottle this is regulated to 3000 psi so i cannot put more pressure in this than what this gun is designed to do this will only put out 3000 so what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up make sure the valve is closed and we're going to pressurize the gun and as it's pressurized I'm going to have hopefully you guys can see that gauge and there goes the air into the air tube you can hear it filling and there goes the gauge and the gauge stops the gauge is stopped around 1400 psi this is the regulated pressure of the gun now so that's to be uh, to be expected and when it stops making noise back up off on the valve release the air pressure and release the foster fitting as I drop my tank and that's all there is to installing a regulator in a Benjamin Marauder that's it you don't have to take out this gauge block if you don't want to um, mine was already removed like I said um, because there was already a regular regulator in it that's all there is to, to putting a regulator in in the Marauder um, in the future I'm going to be tearing this thing apart again um, I have a lot of parts to put back onto this I scavenged this actually uh, <laughs> For parts, I have no transfer port adjustment or anything in it. So, for safety purposes, what I'm going to do is, now that it holds air, it's not leaking anywhere, I don't want to leave this pressurized because I'm going to be taking it apart again anyway. So, I'm going to relieve the pressure on this. Well, I'll do that off camera. I don't have to show you guys how to do that again. Um, so, what I'm going to end up doing in the future with this gun in my next rebuild after I get the barrel and everything... I'm going to be putting in this valve and this lightweight hammer by uh, Wicked Air Rifles. This is a lighter uh, valve. You can push it with your finger, which you cannot do with a stock uh, Marauder valve. And a lightened hammer. So this will eliminate hammer bounce, and I should be getting a good amount of shots uh, with this. Um, you guys that are into taking your Marauders apart or any other air guns apart regularly... Um, you need to bathe the parts to, to clean them off. Use transmission fluid. Uh, transmission fluid is a very good uh, medium to use. And one of the so-called big air gun companies actually use transmission fluid, Dextron 2, as <laughs> their pellet lube, their uh, pellet gun oil. So keep that in mind, and it's a lot cheaper that way. Um, if you guys are doing a lot of work on your Marauders, um, this is from Archer Air Guns. This is from Stephen Archer. And this is a uh, double seal kit for the Benjamin Marauder. And it comes with a little piece that blocks, when you take all of this apart, it blocks one of the passages. So when you put the valve in, the hole, the empty hole in... The body of this doesn't chew up the O-ring as the valve is going past this. It's a very nice tool to have, and it comes with uh, his two times seal kit. So this is a good thing to get. Um, I'll be installing some lane regulators in the future. And all of that. I'm going to do a total teardown of this gun once I get all the parts and everything uh, in, in line with it. So... That'll be next time where we'll do the barrel, and I'll show you eventually how I'm going to modify this gun for a backup gun for WFTF uh, purposes. 
Okay, guys. Basically, all we did was, it's a very simple process. You take this cap off, slide the regulator in, put it back together. It's a very easy process. Um, for those of you who are mechanically inclined, uh, this is a very simple thing and an upgrade you can do. Um, in the future, I'm going to show a video. It's probably going to be well over a half an hour. How I'm going to reassemble my gun with all the aftermarket parts and everything in it. Um, that's the same regulator I am shooting in my gun right now um, in competition. It's an excellent regulator. I probably have an extreme spread of well under uh, single digits. It's probably in the eight, in, in the six to nine realm in feet per second from the highest to lowest shot until it goes off the regulator. Um, guys have any, uh, any other questions or ideas? Shoot me an email, shoot me a comment. Um, we're going to be doing some other stuff in the future. Like I said, we're going to be putting some tricked out parts and everything in my Marauder. And uh, we're going to go from there. But until next time, this is Field Target Tech, and I'm Tom Holland.